Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back to the channel. And uh, I kind of hate myself a little bit right now. I'm a gear whore. I'm a gear snob. I like higher end, more expensive gear, not only because that's usually going to be the best in general overall, but because I like my toys. And I like those toys that have a very refined fit and finish. And that's exhibited in almost every facet of my life, mainly in the EDC stuff. And that has yet to really not serve me well anyway. Um, <laughs> however, that's caused me to overlook some real winners in the budget price points in flashlights. This is the Sofern SC29. Now, this is a true 3000 lumen light. Most of the companies that make that claim on their lights are actually 1,000 lumens or 1,500 lumens with a 3,000 lumen turbo. This is two. However, the turbo isn't really a turbo. The turbo on this isn't just a short boost of power, which is what turbo is supposed to be, just like on a car. It's a short boost of extra power, and then that goes away, and then it steps down to its standard power, right? <laughs> Most turbo modes on lights run anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds, right? You'll have it in turbo mode, and it's going to do its crazy amount of light, and then it all of a sudden drops off, you know, maybe from 3,000 lumens down to, let's say, 1,000. And it's a significant drop-off, and it happens very, very quickly. This, you can run at the full 3,000 lumen turbo for four, no, 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 not four minutes, four hours. Now, I don't even want to think about how unbelievably hot the uh, head of this light is going to get running it for four hours at 3,000 lumens. I would think that that's actually pretty damn dangerous. Here is the light. And then inside the packaging, let's see what else we get here. Open this up. It's a book. And it's a USB to USB-C charging cable, as you would expect. And this is the light. It is nice and substantial. It's beefy without being burdensome, without being unrealistically heavy. And believe me, I know heavy, big lights. This is actually just a hair larger than my titanium Cylon here. And it's probably about 20% lighter. Come on, just, just stay there. Don't roll off the table. Just stay. I like this light a lot. You can adjust the pocket clip to any side that you want to, however is best for you. I like it here on the same side as the E-switch. Because if that's in my pocket, this is going to be right up against the outside of my pocket, not up against my body. If you thought, well, I want it the other way, well, fine. Now you've got it up against your body in the pocket and not up against the pocket. You can do whatever the hell you want to, man. That's the freedom of having that free spinning pocket clip. It's so substantial that it's like I feel like I can't hurt it. It feels like a tank in my hands. It feels really, really rugged, really, really tough. Now, I am not a rugged abuser of any of my gear. While you can see marks on most of my knife blades from cutting stuff and tearing stuff down, I still take very, very good care of them. I, I clean them up as much as I can, and I make them as presentable as possible at all times because, you know, when I buy something nice that I really, really enjoy... I want to keep it nice because part of the enjoyment is possibly the design and the beauty of that item that I purchased. So I'm not really a heavily abusive person on any of my EDC gear. 
Now, it's funny because on my handguns, I'm a little bit rougher and I care a lot less about how they end up looking at the end of the day. And I don't know if that's really strange or not because I think you're just expecting it. Holster wear and things like that. It's just something that is a natural byproduct of, of owning those things. So that's a little bit different. But as far as my flashlights and, and my uh, my knives go, I try to take as uh, good a care of them as I possibly can. But this, I really don't feel like I have to be particularly careful with it. You know, maybe because you don't want to scratch off the the finish of it, but it just feels tough. It feels like I can knock it around and bang it around, and I love that. And that's exactly what I want for a knife that, or excuse me, for a light that I'm considering carrying every day. If this is something where you just have a massive, large collection of flashlights and they only go out with you occasionally, that's an entirely different thing. For me, I'm going to carry carry one of these every single day. It may be in a backpack. It may be in a sling bag. It may be in my pocket. It may be thrown in the center console of my car. I don't know. But it's I want it to be able to get knocked around and banged around and still function properly and reliably every time I pull it out. Another feature I like about this is this has a very strong magnetic tail cap. This is probably one of the strongest magnets I've felt in a tail cap. And I think it's probably going to come in handy for a lot of reasons. I'm not really a, uh, a, a fix-it kind of dude, but any project where you really need to have both hands free and you really need to have additional light... This is going to come in super duper handy by having that magnetic tail cap on there. I dig that. But that's not a unique feature. That's something that a lot of lights these days have. I've seen so far two Sofern lights. They've both had that. I think most, if not all, O lights have that. It's a very, very common thing. But just because it's common doesn't mean you can't list it as a plus or a pro when you're doing a pro and con list of lights that you're considering carrying. Now, you've got a 21700 battery. I don't know which side. There we go. It was. Come on. Get that open. There is your 21700 battery. Pop that bad boy in there. The threading feels really nice. Here's the thing. A lot of lights these days, they focus really, really, really heavily on that giant number of the lumens. They harp on the lumen count, and they, they, they tell you just how intense and crazy that light is. And they don't focus on the candela, and they don't focus on the quality of the beam and the distance of the throw. What Sofern is doing here is they're claiming 142 meters of throw. And I have no reason to doubt them on that. I'm probably not going to be able to measure off exactly 142 meters or anything even remotely close going out into the backyard. However, from what I've seen so far in the use, it is a good amount of throw. It's not super ridiculously insane, but it's really, really good, especially for a pocket light like this. The body is 6061 aluminum, which is where I think they're able to price this as low as they do without sacrificing performance. If we went a step up in aluminum and the cost went up, the difficulty in machining went up, which means everything gets done slower, there's a higher waste rate, then you know I could see this probably being $80 or $100. Uh, obviously, if this went up into titanium, you'd probably be looking at four uh, or $500 with everything else remaining the same. So I think with the 6061 choice, that allows them to cut the cost as much as possible without sacrificing anything. Because 6061 is still going to be tough. Yes, it is softer. It can ding or dent a little bit easier. But you're probably not going to be throwing this down the driveway or anything. If you drop it or whatever, I think it's going to hold up just fine. Obviously, it's going to handle the shock just fine. And the water resistance is just fine. But... Overall, 
I think that's probably where the savings probably comes in. And the fact that it's not using a really crazy driver inside. You don't have 30,000 options. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm talking to you, IF23, with your ridiculous amount of options. Yep, that can get a little bit ridiculous. I love this light, but it's it, there's so much to memorize to figure out how to use the darn thing. It's crazy. Now, one of the things uh, that I really like about this that, that some lights have and some lights don't, and I don't know if that's really a price-specific thing because I've kind of seen it in, in, in every kind of price range, is the fact that you've got a reverse polarity protection so that if you accidentally put the battery in the wrong way, you don't fry your electronics and kill the light. Another thing that I really appreciate about this is it has a very, very easy and intuitive user interface. And the fact that the lockout is easy to use. Now, once you've locked it out, if something happens, you've got this in your pocket and something's pushing up against that switch, the most you're getting is moonlight, which generates pretty much no heat whatsoever. So you could feel safe actually carrying this thing. We've all had lights that we didn't feel totally safe carrying, if it, had, especially if they had a side switch. This you don't have to worry about. So uh, let's talk about moonlight. So let's talk about the modes here very quickly so that you get an idea of what it is that you're dealing with. Super easy UI. You turn it on. Uh, your first is low, which is, I'm sorry, if you, if you hold it and you do the moonlight, you've got one perfect single lumen. To me, that's the perfect moonlight mode. It's enough light to actually do something for you, and it is not overbearing at all. Click it over to low is 30 lumens. Click it again to, uh, to medium, which is 350. Next step is high, which is 1,000 lumens. Let me go ahead and pop up the chart so you can see not only what the lumens are, but what the runtime lengths and the candela ratings are for each of these. Because honestly, that's where I was impressed. I've handled lights in a lot of different price ranges. And a lot of these that are even in this lower price range, but are performance-based tactical style lights, don't have these crazy high run times and don't have this degree of candela. So I'm actually really impressed that you're getting all this for between 35 and 40 bucks. And it really depends on where you're buying it, when you're buying it, when they run a sale, it goes to about 35 or a little bit less, but the average price is about 40. So let's talk about the specs as well. As I mentioned, it is uh, T6-6061 aluminum. The length is 4.8 inches. Diameter is 1.2 inches. So yeah, it's got a little bit of size to it, but it's nothing crazy. The weight is 2.7 ounces without the battery in it. You have the magnetic tail cap, and the emitter is a single XHP50B. Now, do I like this more than the IF23 that I just reviewed? As an actual EDC light that would be in my pocket all the time, yes, absolutely, hands down, it's not even a question. It's not as blocky feeling as the IF23. It's not as heavy. It's not a significant difference, but it's not quite as heavy. And most importantly, as I mentioned before, the UI is a lot more simple. And as I click through, I say click through, but I, and I apologize. As I step through by holding down, it's just low, medium, and high. That's it. And then I can double click for turbo. And then I've got my turbo, which will last a ridiculous amount of time. Now, I'm sure it steps down a little bit after a few minutes. I don't think it, it remains the, the full 3,000 for four hours, but I think it's close enough for government work. But yeah, that is pretty insane that you're able to do that. I do love a nice, gentle moonlight mode. And yeah, man, I think the IF-23 is awesome. It really, really is. 
but it's better for me as an at-home emergency light. I can have it sitting here if the power goes out during a big storm. And I can have the, the softer diffused lighting lighting up the area that I'm sitting at. Or I can have oops, the whole thing lit up and I can bounce this off the ceiling and spread light across the room softly. And then have this directional soft light wherever I want it. And obviously, as I was discussing a lot during this review, anytime I need a diffused light source, this is going to be great. But if I'm ever doing anything up in my studio and I want to have that additional diffused light source, I've got it. And it really is great for, you know, doing the, uh, using the colors. Let's get it off of the, uh, the pink here. Let's go to something that, here we go. I think blue is a nice accenting color. So for at home use and things like an emergency use, stuff like that, this is the light for me. For everyday carry in the pocket, this I feel is a much, much better choice. And whichever way you go, honestly, for such a small investment, and I, I don't like to harp on prices. And lately I've had a few videos where there've been things to harp about prices on that. $28,000 knife that I brought out. A lot of the focus on that is how crazy the value is on that particular pocket knife. When I'm talking about custom lights, yeah, uh, a lot of people are going to focus on the price. They want to know the price. They can go look for it and they don't want sticker shock. So you're kind of focusing on the price there. And then when you find something that's super crazy, ridiculously affordable, you end up focusing on the price there because for me, it's just shocking that this light for 40 bucks or a few dollars less performs this well. And I really like the fact that it's a simple light to use. I like having a lot of options, don't get me wrong, but sometimes you just want, hey, I want to turn it on and have a flashlight. I don't want to have to scroll through a bunch of different settings and a bunch of different modes. And yes, by the way, this does have a strobe mode. I, f I forgot to uh, demonstrate that for you. So you get a straightforward flashlight and you've got a strobe for emergency use. And that's it. No frills, nothing ridiculous, just a good straightforward solid light. And for once, a light that will hold that ridiculous, crazy high lumen number that's printed all over the box and all over the marketing material and all over their websites because every flashlight company does that. They pick whatever that maximum number is and that's the number they throw at you all over the place. And they don't tell you, or they do tell you, usually they tell you, but you have to kind of search for it or figure it out that, okay, yeah. Okay, it's got 85,000 lumens, but it only lasts for 18 seconds. Here you've got that crazy amount of lumens and it lasts for hours. That's pretty damn awesome. Now let's take it outside and have a little bit of fun with it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let there be light. As I expected, this is a really good looking beam pattern that my camera absolutely will not focus on. Let me go to turbo. Yeah, I really do like this, this beam pattern a lot. Now you have a good hotspot, but it's not a clearly defined hotspot, which normally I'd want to knock it on, but it is such a smooth transition to the spill. And that very outer edge there is not a flat cutoff but it just gently falls off. And I really like that. So I've got what I consider to be a good amount of light. And there is your strobe, which I still feel bad that I didn't demonstrate earlier in the video. Now remember, I have this on its turbo mode right now, and I can maintain this level of light for four hours. Now again, as I mentioned, I wouldn't want to actually test that because dear 
God, that would get super ridiculously hot. Get us out of low, medium, high. So there's your thousand lumens and cranked up on turbo again. All in all, I'm super impressed. I think this is a fantastic everyday carry light. And I think it does everything that I want it to do. And it seems to work more reliably within the focus on my camera, unfortunately. But I hope you guys are seeing it well enough. And I hope you can hear me over the traffic of the main road just behind my house here.